That's cool. Well, I've got some questions now about probably uh, an area that Zen has dabbled in in the past, but seems to be getting a lot more focused now, and that's VR. Oh, yes. So, Turning this over to Jared. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I've been, I've got the Quest 2 now, and it's a pretty amazing piece of hardware. And I'm just wondering, with Star Wars Pinball VR and that direction that Zen's going in, what role does VR play in sort of Pinball FX's strategy overall? Um, in Pinball FX's strategy, I can't say right now at this certain moment because we, we have a we have sort of a business problem with VR, which prevents us from putting VR directly into FX because uh, for our licenses anyway, VR is a separate category. We have to address it separately and it has to most of the time be its own product. The Wait, industry so is said, evolving. Let me, let me just stop you there just so I can clarify here. So it's it's if you're licensing for a pinball video game, they categorize though VR as a completely separate category itself. Most licensors do. Is oh, what you're okay. seeing with, right. with with Lucasfilm and Star Wars right now, right? Okay. Um, we're building a standalone experience because VR is, you know, they don't want there's there's a notion of like you know brand equity and just releasing things that are just kind of add-ons when you can really make a full experience for something and give it a proper treatment. So, you know, in the in when we're trying to figure out how do we ingest content into FX and can we do VR, Zen can release our own games with the with the VR treatment within FX, sure. But licensing is, is much different than that. They, uh, there's just, it, while it might be under the same games group, it's a different product category to them. I'd imagine it's sort of like, you know, if we, if we take what Zachariah Pinball have done um, with um, Magic Pixel, they've just added in a VR layer into the product. Mm -hmm. and Which is something a lot well, of people well have been bringing I like up. It. Yeah. It's good. That's right. It's, it's a, you know, they just switch it on and it's there. Now, I'd imagine that, you know, Zen could have done it the same way, had, you know, the, you know, the room style, a basic room set up for each of the Star Wars tables. But then you have something like the Star Wars Pinball VR experience where it's super immersive and you just can't do that in the same ecosystem as uh, FX, uh, FX3 at the moment, but Pinball FX in the future, because it's like, you've got to think about, you know, all the different... Um, you know, collectibles and stuff that you can put into the room and what are they going to look like and how is the interaction going to work? So I can kind of see where you're going with that. It is very different from a, a like planning perspective and an implementation perspective. Um, you can have like a basic experience or really, really rich experience. And it sounds like you're going down the path of individual tailored rich experiences in VR. Yeah, you're you're right. Uh, you you I need to adopt your messaging, Jared, because <laughs> <laughs> there you, you can have that now. very well. You know, but in the in the raw, you know, you said it very eloquently. But just the way that I look at it, and the way that Zen has to view it is, you know, look look at a push of a button. You say what we do with the Williams tables. You can go from the uh, d the original creation to the remastered version, right? So of course, at a push of a button, we could toggle to a VR experience, so to speak. It's just. You know, we're bound by different rules. The Zachary guys, again, they have a great implementation. Um, you know, we, 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 you can't do that if you're going to have brands like Star Wars and, you know, others. So, yeah, this. I think that probably was leading into another question um, as well, which it seems like based on that answer, if there were going to be more VR experiences, they will be separate apps on, on VR because of that, because of that requirement from licensors they they need that that individual experience tailored to their brand and their requirements correct and uh yeah. once they saw what we did with fx2 vr you know because that was our that was our proof of concept right we mm. we had to do some of our own tables first we showed them how the, this could work um actually universal allowed us to apply you know the universal classics into fx and, and same with telltale with walking dead um mm. and then we, when we wanted to get more aggressive and go for you know something bigger meteor star wars it's like Oh, let's let's do something that's never been done. So what you've got is a Star Wars experience that happens to be a pinball game in VR. I mean, like it is cool. Yeah. And so there's all this extra stuff, and like that just shows the like what VR was built for. It's it's a totally different platform. It's a different experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's definitely an exciting direction because you know experiencing the Star Wars pinball package or the experience in VR is well, <laughs> it's pretty special. <laughs> So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, leading on from that, though, um, 
with the Pinifex framework, are, are the VR apps, even though they're separate, tailored, branded experiences, are they still going to share the same sort of underlying framework that Pinball FX offers? You know, things like maybe leaderboards or you know the competitive access uh, aspects like Pinball Royale or tournaments. Is that sort of going to be baked into these experiences or will it sort of be more separated? Well, uh, it's a progression like anything. So we're looking at VR platforms again, right? And you know how I just told you I don't like building platforms, but mm. <laughs> each of, a separate Star Wars P, uh, you know, VR game is now a Star Wars VR platform. And then inside of there, we have eight tables shipping, right? And there's a bunch of other tables that we still have in the library. Uh, we do have leaderboards um, and you know, the, a feature set can grow. Um, we have certain targets we want to hit because look, May 4th is coming. So it would make sense that we try mm -hmm. to get something out mm -hmm. for the hype. So there's just so many different things that come and this is what we could get done. I think that the feature set is rich right now for VR. Could it be better? Yes. Is Pinball Royale going to come to VR? But right now I have no idea. We're going to <laughs> make sure it works first in standard screens. <laughs> um, yeah. But some, you know, of course, yeah, there's like, there's all sorts of cool things we could build into the platform and the services we could do. We can expand. That's really good. Now, we were talking before about FX2 VR. Now, there, I know that Zen did a, a promotion on Oculus recently for that um, particular um, product, and it was actually on on sale, which is really good. Um, now, the, the thing about it's still a good package to download, particularly if you're gearing up for FX, um, uh, Star Wars Pinball, because it gives you a taste of what to expect. But at the same time, uh, it's a very different experience. Now... It, with FX to VR, there are some underlying minor bugs in that package. It's pretty much only one, which is like a, a menu overlay problem in there. Mm -hmm. it, are there plans to just patch that and and then call it done with FX to VR? Yeah, and you know, the game works beautifully on Quest 1. And, and then if you play it on uh, Quest 2, you encounter this bug. So it is a okay. device-specific bug. Uh, we are aware of it. Um, it... It, we, you know, it unfortunately kind of intersected when we were in the middle of Star Wars Pinball VR. Mm. Um, and this is one of the things, you know, like we don't, we haven't had the bandwidth to, to do maintenance and to do fixes when new devices ship. So that'll be a beauty of having more guys on board. <laughs> we'll be able to tackle yeah, these right. problems quicker because it does suck to see our game rating kind of suffering now. Uh, you know, like that bug is there, it's prevalent. Um, yeah. And we, we've gotten flack, but yeah, we need to fix that. It's, it's on a list, it's on our list. Long list of red items, long. you know, all the red <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, a long list. You sort of like roll it out and it just goes down the hall. I'm imagine. aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did roll out some patches recently. I don't know if you guys caught those, but we, we did issue some some fixes on Steam and uh, I think on Nintendo Switch recently and some others. So Yeah, we did see those come through actually, which was yeah. good. They seem to be well received. Um, the other question I had about... Um, I guess FX2 is those tables that are in FX2 now, they've already got a VR um, environment set for them. I just wonder with Pin FX, is there a chance that we're going to see almost a reboot of FX2 VR and start to see some of these original Zen IPs coming into a package, um, a VR package um, in the future? Good question. Um, it's going to be a technology update again. And sorry, I'm getting washed out, everybody. The sun is moving yeah. in Northern California. It's up later, and I'm getting whited out more than white than I already am. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's a ghost, uh, folks. <laughs> yeah, I'm ghosting on you. Um, no, you know, we'd have to like if we were going to re-release those, it'd be the same thing: a rebuild in new technology, a remaster, a re-release. Uh, I will just say that I think our you know, our VR roadmap in our minds is more about um, so what, what some of our cool licenses and our future licenses are going to uh, enable us to do. Mm. Um, we, you know, it, it's always a balance. Like I know everyone loves our Zen originals um, and there's new ones, by the way, in production, which you guys know about for longer than two years. We, uh, Two years we've known about them. Show, I was so. screaming that in the show. I was like, we've known for two years. <laughs> I saw yeah, I saw that. I, I watched that because uh, thank you guys for that episode, by the way. That you, I think you, you were very fair to us. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, did I answer the question? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I think the, the summary of that is yes, but it requires basically a brand new 
re-engineering of those tables anyhow it's not just a flick the switch sort of thing it's like a concerted targeted effort and it sounds like that effort is better spent on some of the new um licenses coming out um, over the course of this and next year am Um, i guessing correctly that star wars vr is being done in unreal also it is okay yes because we knew that we knew that with the quest 2 that it basically was on your unreal unity or your own engine that would function so we mm. were like okay it's probably going to be one of those two when we were still guessing what engine you might be switching to um yep yeah yeah that's fair enough now i've got one more question uh on the vr space and um you'll probably laugh at this one now okay. you'll see behind chris he's got no a, i don't have it uh, in, in this room right now all right well it, he it, it he has in right the past he has a thing called a pin sim controller and you know it basically allows you to sort of have that feeling of standing in front of a machine when you're in vr so i'm just wondering can we expect to see can i can i buy this year <laughs> perhaps something from arcade one up that does the same thing as that pin sim controller it gives you that feeling in vr of standing in front of a machine so it like completes the experience for star wars pinball vr <laughs> it's it's a great product that should come to market and yeah <laughs> we have we have several prototypes uh in our own office which uh, actually back in the day jeremy williams uh who was doing some cool videos for oculus back in the day who i think maybe built the first one with well wired. that's who i bought the the chip from he yeah. did oh cool yeah. yeah uh yeah so we've had our eye on that and now that we have big vr games you know and look star wars pinball vr is trying to be one of the top vr titles of the year so mm. We'll see what kind of adoption we get. And if we feel like there's an install base, you know, we can pull some triggers very quickly to uh, sell additional hardware that completes the experience. Because I will personally yeah. say that the ability to anchor yourself with something in front of you, I was able to, in the VR experience, let go, turn around, take a step to the side, look where in the VR where the table should be, step and put my hands immediately where they should go. It mm-hmm. was just like a perfect fit. And I was like, oh my God, that's that's the bomb that <laughs> that sells it so well <laughs> it is really cool uh i wasn't so graceful the first time i tried that chris i might have tripped and fallen over <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a well, you know, loss, right and you're just like you know i'm out well where i ran into the issue was i was trying to uh me and Jer- jared were trying to see if we could like see under the table and how far along the side of the table could we get and I didn't realize where the wall that was in front of me was in relation to that. And I wound up smacking into the wall <laughs> going up. Oh, okay. I got to, uh, I got to adjust like a little that. bit. Yeah. You know, I did really like that. About that. VR though, right? I mean, like, you, the, the, the game is in front of you and you can see it from all angles underneath it, the side, you want to get really close up into the play field. Like, I mean, you can. Well, and honestly, that was one of the things that we were impressed with was with what Zen had done was that it is, viewable from all angles like yeah. you can look down to where the ball drains and it's finished inside there it's not just you know a mere reflection of what should be no it's there's like parts that it, yeah. it, it, it's it's there yeah and even even with us looking on the underside of the table it was like nope they put a bottom on there to the point that i think on mars one of the spiders is even crawling under there at, yeah at it some is point. yeah so. it's actually a a, a, a texture that you know things can interact with which yeah. you know it's it's like you've got to do that in vr i'd imagine which probably adds to the <laughs> because cost people like me are going to be dorky it. enough to try it. <laughs> uh, yeah I, i'll put it <laughs> a perfect example of this was i was playing um oh god now i can't even remember what game it was that i was doing oh it was a uh, uh, on last of us part two and my character it's raining there's a rain gutter there's a whole wash of rain falling down and i had her walk directly under it. And sure enough, there was animation of her doing her hair underneath it. And br- and I was like, they knew that some idiot like me was going to be like, hey, I wonder what happens. Do they interact with the water? And yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's pretty cool. I'd imagine that sort of stuff they Mel, you know, adds to the complexity of producing a, a VR package because you've got to think of all the different interaction scenarios that someone might do when they're actually interacting with the game yes you yeah. and then when you're in qa and you find all the things you missed and you realize oh we got another <laughs> month to work on this thing <laughs> yep didn't think of that or that or that yeah happens all the yeah time. users it'd be game development would be easier if it wasn't for all those pesky users 
<laughs> if they would only things. do exactly what you wanted them to. 